Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In one of our previous video, we've discussed how a planetary gear set helps in achieving different speeds. In this video, we'll be discussing the gearboxes used in vehicles with automatic transmission. As discussed in our previous video, the driving, reaction and the driven member of the planetary gear set should be changed frequently for obtaining different speeds. But that is not practically possible. In order to achieve this, an automatic gearbox uses two or three planetary gear sets connected in series and a set of clutch plates. An automatic gearbox with two planetary gear sets for speed reduction gives four forward speeds, whereas a gearbox with three planetary gear sets gives us six forward speeds. In this video, let's discuss an automatic gearbox with two planetary gear sets. When it comes to construction, the sun gears of the two planetary gear sets are connected to a single intermediate shaft, that is, both the sun gears will rotate when the shaft rotates. The planet carrier of the first gear set is connected to the ring gear of the other gear set. That is, when the planet carrier of the first gear set rotates, it drives the ring gear of the second set. On the other hand, planet carrier of the gear set 1 is in turn connected to a hollow shaft. The hollow shaft is then connected to the driving shell, a case that rotates along with the input shaft. The input is given to the system from the engine and the output is taken from the planet carrier of the second gear set. In addition to all these, there are four clutch packs. The first clutch pack is used for engaging the input shaft with the intermediate shaft. The second clutch is used for engaging the driving shell with the secondary planet gears. The third one is used for holding the first ring gear. And the last one is used for holding and releasing the second ring gear. Now let's see how this system works. For the first case, let us assume that clutch 1 engages the input shaft with the intermediate shaft and clutch 4 holds the first ring gear. As clutch 1 is engaged, when the input shaft rotates, the intermediate shaft rotates as well. This drives the sun gears which in turn drives the planet gears. This will tend to make the ring gear rotate as well. But the ring gear stays fixed because of the clutch. This condition results in maximum speed reduction and gives us the first gear. When the clutch 4 is released and clutches 1 and 3 are engaged, the intermediate shaft rotates the sun gears and thus the planet gears rotate as well. Since the first ring is not fixed now, it rotates. This in turn also results in speed reduction but the speed of the output is quite higher than the previous one, giving us the second gear. Now, for obtaining the direct drive, clutch 3 is released and clutches 1 and 2 are engaged simultaneously. Thus, input is given to both sun gears and second ring gear. This makes them rotate at the same speed and there is no speed reduction. Engaging clutches 2 and 3 at the same time will make the output shaft rotate at a speed higher than the input speed. This condition is said to be the overdrive condition. For obtaining reverse speed, an additional planetary gear set is used. The sun gear of the third set is directly connected and the ring gear is provided with both inner and outer teeth. There is a pawl mechanism which can lock up this ring gear and the planet carrier is attached to the ring gear of the first gear. When this ring gear is locked and clutch 4 is engaged, the planet carrier of the second set stays locked whereas the ring gear rotates. This makes the planet gears spin and the sun gears will start rotating in the opposite direction. Thus, the direction of the output changes. The same setup can be used for obtaining six different forward speeds by providing clutch packs to the third gear set as well. This is how an automatic gearbox works and how the desired speed is obtained.